Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I'm a misfit probably in this session, but I will tell you I'm not completely a misfit because I think now when you are here, uh, after two, three years, you are hearing less of metaverse and more of AI. And trust me when I say five years from now when you come to this show, you will hear more of quantum computing. And that's what we do in Semicon. And that's the story I'm going to talk to you about. But before I do so, do so I'll take you into a journey in the past. This is the device that you have in your hands, in your pockets. It's an amazing computer. And the reason it works is because of this man, Jack Kilby. 1960s, he's the inventor of integrated circuit. Everything that comes after that, Moore's law, chips, computers, desktops, laptops, phones, all because of that. But was there a computer before that? Yes, there was. This is how the computer looked like. And that's how actually we went to moon using those kind of machines as well. Now, accelerate to the present time, how about quantum? This is exactly how the quantum computers look like now. So look familiar with the people and the cables? Yes, they are like that. But our ambition is to get out of that mode and go to this chip mode. So what we are looking at is quantum integrated circuit, the equivalent of integrated circuits. And this is what we build in the company. What happens after that? What happens after 20, 30 years? Who knows? We don't know that yet. But we are in the path to build those machines that will give the future. Are there quantum computers that are working, that are solving some problems? Yes, there are. IBM is one of the biggest examples that there is. This is one of their machines, or two of their machines. On the left, you see the machine from a few years ago, and the right one is a better machine. That's uh, from this year. The number that I look at is the size. It was seven square meters, now it's 44 square meters. That is not the way we want to go. That is not the way how classical computing went. It went for some time, but it went back the right way. And this is what we want to do in Semicon. We want to reverse the trend. And to do that, now hold on it, hold on it for a few minutes because I will be talking about, uh, let's say, a bit science here. So what we want to do is to take that big bulk machine that IBM has and with our processors or our techniques or with our quantum integrated circuit, we want to bring it to a level of a desktop. That's the ambition that we have in our path. And we, to do that, we need to solve a few problems, few little engineering problems, and there are three that we have identified to be the crucial ones. The first thing is we need to get something called the qubit small. They are the ones that they make the quantum happen. So they need to get smaller. The, we need to operate at higher temperature. And this is where quantum really is bad from an environmental and sustainable aspect. Quantum computers consume a lot of heat. If I get back to the image that I showed you, you see or probably see one red dot in the middle. That's where the quantumness happens. The rest are just gulp, sort of taking out energy and making the quantum happen. So we want to change that as well. So these three things, if we can make it happen, we will shrink it down. And this is our promise that we can do it with something called silicon, the same thing that you have in your mobile phones. And that's our brand message. We build quantum integrated circuits or quantum uh, processors for quantum computers. This is the team. We are four co-founders. I'm the commercial guy. Janne is the engineering guy. So Mika is the science guy. And Marku is the manufacturing guy. We are all out of VTT, so we all have some background in research, some background in deep tech, so we know what we are doing. And then we have fantastic advisors. We need advisors because this is a very, very difficult space to navigate. And we recently had Prineha as our advisor. She also advises a little bit bigger organization, which is the White House, but she also advises us. We are very happy about that. And then we have some uh, very, very sort of supportive uh, angel investors in the company. A bit more about the company. We started one and a half year ago. Uh, we spun out of VTT. Uh, we have so far raised seven million, out of which five is uh, non-dilutive grants. So we try to leverage the public investments that are being made to make Europe stronger in terms of quantum computing. 
We do have investors from Finland, Voima Ventures, and some others uh, from UK, Germany, and US. VTT is also a minority stakeholder in the company. We are a growing team, 14 members in the, in the team now. Uh, one thing that I always try to make people understand is if you are talking about chips, there are other companies who build not just quantum chips, but classical chips as well. In most cases, in most cases, they hold the design IP. They do not own the manufacturing IP because the manufacturing is done somewhere in Asia, which is not good. So we do the manufacturing in-house ourselves as well. So we have both the design IP and the manufacturing IP in our possession. Well, how are we better than the competitors? Uh, there are many ways I can explain it, but three things that I would uh, touch upon is manufacturing, which I already mentioned. That's the key aspect that we own the process that we build our chips on. Technology, like I said, the quantum processors is the way to make the quantum computer shrink with the quantum integrated circuit steps. And thirdly, it's again the loop of IP between uh, manufacturing and design. We have partners globally. In one and a half year, we have uh, managed to build university level partnerships and also partnerships with uh, companies in other parts of the value chain that we are operating out of. We have delivered quite a lot in one and a half year. If one thing that I want you to remember uh, about the things that we have done is the speed in which we have delivered. We have filed five IP after we started. We have hired, we have built our infrastructure for measurements. We have delivered chips to our partners. So all these things we have managed to do very well so far. And we are just beginning. Why am I here? Because we are raising. We are raising funding uh, for the next stage of growth. Our goal is to go to 100 qubits by 2027. And we are also looking at a, a revenue stream, which is a side stream for us. I'm happy to discuss it in personal uh, discussions. So that's a unique position in the quantum industry right now to have a commercial revenue. We are looking at global expansion. We will be in US. We will, we will be also expanding in Europe further. We are going to build a commercial team. I'm right now the only commercial guy in the company, so we need a team. Uh, we also have to expand the technical team we have, and we have to increase the capacity to deliver to our customers. So if you are interested in investing in, in uh, quantum, which is a bit into the future, but you want to uh, experience that journey and have trust in the uh, technology, please come and talk to me. That's all I have for you. So Semicon, we build quantum processors for the next generation quantum computers. Thank you very much.